Hey everybody, I found a really cool technique using pattern in Photoshop where we can actually do two things in one spot. One is color grading and the other is adding texture. This is really a cool feature. We're gonna take something that looks like this and we're gonna turn it into something like this. Are we ready for this? Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This channel, if you're new to it, is dedicated to helping you think creatively out of the box as a photographer and as a photo artist. Okay, before we jump into the program here today, if you have any questions on what I'm doing here and you got lost on something, or you have a suggestion about future, um, I don't know, projects or topics you'd like me to cover, uh, please email me at my private email address. It is stephenphotoartist at gmail.com should be right here at the bottom of the screen. Also, I'll have that in the description of the show notes. All right, let's jump into the program, and that is here's a really cool way of doing two things in one spot in Photoshop if it you know fits your needs, and that is uh, actually adding texture and color grading all in one spot, and it's really cool by using a feature we've had for years called patterns. So let's dive into Photoshop right here. Um, if you're new to the channel, um, if you're not new, people know that uh, my favorite way of getting the open dialog box is just by double clicking on my workspace. Again, there's other ways of doing it. Control O, Command O on a Mac is another way of getting the open dialog box. And you can actually go to the file drop down menu here and choose the open dialog box. But I'm just going to double click on my workspace. That gives me the dialog box. Navigate, go find the image. And I'm going to do two images for you. Number one, I'm going to start out with a still life. Now, this technique works with any type of photography. I don't care if it's a portrait, still life, um, <clears throat> landscape, whatever it is, uh, it's a pretty cool technique. So let's take a look at this. Let's open up the image and let me resize this a bit. And let me change <clears throat> my view here so we can move this up. Okay, so with that said, and we'll jump down here to, let me pull this up a little bit so we can see this. We'll go to the uh, Oreo cookie dipped in milk. <clears throat> that is what I heard a Photoshop instructor say years ago. And that, I know that's not the technical term for that, but I, I just like to call it the, uh, again, Oreo cookie dipped in milk. Click on that and you'll see on the flyout menu, a feature there called pattern. Now we've had pattern for years and I'm going to um, go to the drop down menu here just to show you to close this down. We have different categories. I'm using the grass category. So if I expand this, I'm gonna start out by choosing one on the far right. I'm gonna leave everything on default. Later, we could take a look at changing things and I'll show that in the second um, project. Let me just accept that and click on okay right here. So once I do that, now it adds texture, but it also adds a color grade of green. And I'm gonna put this in my shadows and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, but I'm gonna go to the drop down, and you can go to the different blending modes that are available here. And um, in this example, I'm going to do, um, let's do overlay. Overlay is stronger. And the reason I'm doing it to be, to be a bit stronger is you tend to lose subtle changes on YouTube videos, especially when they're upload and optimized. So I tend to over exaggerate so you could see a before and after difference right here. But you can adjust the overlay opacity. Right now, I'm gonna leave that alone. And it just applies this texture to the image and a green color grade. Now, <clears throat> I don't want this to go everywhere. I only want this to go in the darker areas and not the lighter areas. So what we can do is double click, not where the name is here on the layers, but in the gray area. If you double click on that, this will open up the layer style uh, dialog box, and it's a category called blending options. <clears throat> now, if you come down here where it says underlying layer, uh, what I want to do is apply the texture and the color to the darker areas of the image. And that means over here, if I move this slider, because this represents this area, is the lighter areas. If I click and drag this to the left, you can see what it's doing to the image as I do this. Let me over-exaggerate this so we can see this. Now, you can see that when I'm doing this, 
it's a very harsh line and that doesn't look good. So what we want to do is split this node in half by holding down the Alt key or Option on a Mac. And if I, I'm holding that down right now, click and drag and I split that. Now, as I pull this back, you can see I'm making a nice smooth transition. And I'm gonna move this all the way there and I'm gonna move this aggressively about, well, say about right there. Okay, so there's my before and after. So you'll see that most of this is in the darker areas. In fact, I might um, pull this back a little bit. So we can see that before and after. Okay, and again, this is all based on your image, you know, how contrast it is, the colors, that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll base, you know, on uh, how you're going to manipulate these sliders down here. Okay, so I'm going to click on OK to accept that. And there we go. And there's a quick before, after, before, after. Now what I'm going to do is add another one. So I'm going to come to the Oreo cookie dipped in milk, <clears throat> come down to pattern, and I'm going to go to the drop down menu here and choose the middle swatch, which is sort of like a yellowish orange uh, color to it with a lot of texture. Click on OK to accept that. And then again, choose a blending option, whatever looks good to you. And again, soft light is subtle, overlay is a bit stronger. I'm gonna do overlay just for my demo. And then the same thing, I'm going to double click here to open up the layer style. And I want this to be applied to the lighter areas of my image. So I need to move this to the right. And when I do that, it's more a, an abrupt type of transition. So again, I'm holding the Alt key down, option on a Mac to click and drag to split that. And now I can fine tune this based on the look I want based on the image. Very subtle or, you know, a little bit more um, prominent. So there's a before and after. So it's a little bit, you know, subtle. And let's click on OK. And uh, there's... Um, before, after, before, and after on that image. So, um, you know, again, maybe that's a little bit too dark for you. So we can maybe, there's different ways of doing this. I'm going to duplicate the layer with Control J, Command J in a Mac, and maybe just let's pull up screen and uh, or lighten. Lighten is, let's do screen. That's a lot of lightening up. So I'm going to pull the opacity down right here. Just scrub to the left. And, you know, if you want to apply a vignette or something, I mean, that's all up to you. But uh, the, the, the point is on this is that we are applying in one location both texture and color grading by using a feature in Photoshop called Pattern. I think it's a really cool option that we have. And again, it may not be right for all types of images, but um, I like it. And I, I'm, I think I'm going to start using this more often. Okay, so let's do another image, but I'm going to go beyond uh, what I'm doing here. So let's close out of that. And let's open up the second image using the same technique. So I'm going to choose, uh, some people might call this a lifestyle image. I'm not sure about that, but let me relocate this so we can see this. Okay, so with that selected, let's do the same two things, but I'm going to alter this a little bit. Uh, let's just do the generic stuff first. And that is, I'm going to go here, I'm going to come down to the pattern, and I'm going to pick the one on the far right, click on OK. And then again, I'm just going to choose uh, Overlay. Well, you know what, this one, I think I'm going to do soft light, so it's not as intense. So click on that. And then again, I'm going to double click to open up that blending option. So this is, again, in layer styles, but the category is called blending options. And we come to an area called underlying layer. And I don't want this uh, in the light areas. I want this in the dark areas. So I'm moving that across like this. You can see how hard the lines are, where the light areas are. I'm going to hold the Alt key down, option on a Mac to split that apart just to help with that transition. That's pretty cool. And again, judgment called by you on how far you go with this. So I'm going to go about, say about right, right there. And I'll click on OK. So that way we can see a before, after, before, after. OK, now let's do the other one. And that is, again, pattern. And let's pick the uh, middle one 
on, under grass, click on OK. And I'm going to do the same thing. I will do um, overlay versus soft light. I might go with overlay so this really stands out. And then I'm going to double click again to open up the um, layer style blend option area. And I want this in the light area. So I'm going to move the darks slider to the right. And then I'm going to split that again with Alt or Option on a Mac to split that and adjust that based on my you know, needs, how I want that to look. So I see a little texture up here in the light. I like that. Um, let me push this over a bit to the right. And again, just adding that. Okay, so I'm going to click on OK and again a judgment call. I'm pushing this um, a little bit too far in my opinion because I want you to be able to see this. But there's a before, after, before, and after. And let's zoom in on, on her a little bit here. So um, I might not want that texture on her face. So what I might do is um, let's take a look at this. And that's adding a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both these layers by clicking on the top one, holding the shift key, click on the next one below it, control G. <clears throat> that would be command G on a Mac to actually group these two right here. So let me do that. So that's now grouped together. So I can turn this on and off in one spot. But what I want to do is add a mask to that group. And that allows me now to paint with my paintbrush. I'm painting in black. It's a soft brush. I can see my opacity is at 30%. Your, your might be at 100%. So I recommend dropping that down. And I'm just going to paint in this area on the skin. I just want to take that off her face. The rest of it I want to leave. I want to leave a little texture and stuff. But again, I'm doing this at 30%, just sort of cherry picking the areas I want to take off uh, part of the color grade and uh, go like that. And so now you can see that I'm turning that on and off. By the way, the way I'm turning the uh, mask on and off is just a shortcut keystroke. If I hold the shift key down, so by holding the shift key down, click once, uh, I'm blocking the mask. So it's like the mask doesn't even exist. Shift click again, uh, I'm reactivating the mask. So turning off, on. So that's the way just, you know, cherry picking and looking at the before and after real quick. Now, here's something else you could play with. And that is if I go to this category and I'll double click on this to open up the, the pattern feature. By double clicking on that, the scale is 100. If I scrub to move this to the right, you could see what it's doing. It's adding more texture. Now, based on your image, you might want that. Maybe it's a still life and not a portrait or something, and you really want to get aggressive with that. Or you want to go the opposite way. And that is, I'm going to go under 100%, and that makes it a little bit less on the texture. So again, that is totally a judgment call by you on how far you want to go with this. Cool. And then <clears throat> just uh, a, just as a little tip, if you ever want to reset this back to 100, instead of trying to type it in or scrub it, if you hold the Alt key down or Option on a Mac, it will change your Cancel button here in all dialog boxes back to Reset. So notice that when I hold down the Alt key, and again, that would be Option on a Mac, now I could click on the button, Reset, it pushes it back to 100. Now, I might further play with this. Let me pull back on this image a little bit. And um, you find that I do this a lot. Let me reactivate the, the mask there. And that is, I'm going to duplicate the layer down here at the very bottom. So now i got two copies. I'm going to come down to uh, Multiply. And Multiply um, is like taking two 35 millimeter slides and stack them on top of each other. It just deepens and darkens everything. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mask to that layer and with my paintbrush, and I'm still at 30% opacity. It's a soft edge brush. I'm going to paint in light where I want the light. So I really want her to stand out. So I'm just starting with the light there, clicking, dragging down. Let's drag across if I want. Um, let's really bring out these lights over here. So I'm masking over these spots. I'll do a before and after in a few minutes. But this is just all sort of like touch-up type work based on the look that you're trying to get. 
Um, I love to do this because it adds just a lot of mood to the image. And um, I'm just masking in parts of the glasses and uh, the bottle right there. So people can tell, oh, yeah, there's a bottle there, but it's really, it's in the dark. And maybe a little bit here, a little bit of lightness here. So I'm just cherry picking where I want some lightness to fall. Maybe over here a little bit so we can see, oh, yeah, looks like there's a chair back there or something. Okay, so holding that shift key down. There's a before on that and after, before and after. Cool. I love this technique. I think this is something I'm going to be using a lot where I can actually add some texture and color grading to that image. And again, you could build on this with other techniques if you want. But again, that's the pattern feature. And uh, before I end this, if you guys, uh, again, um, do me a favor. If you have a question or issue, email me right here at stephenphotoartist at gmail.com. Again, I'd like to thank the people who are supporting my channel by going to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Stephen Photo Artist. Uh, the link is right here on the screen. It will be in my show notes. So again, thank you very much for doing that. It's on a volunteer basis. It's not a subscription-based uh, type thing. And also take a look at the extra category because I'm starting to put some tutorials up there that you can actually download. And I promised everybody, I'm not going to go over $10. Uh, everything's going to be 5 7 and 10 In fact, I'm actually working on a course. Now, it's going to take me a while. Hopefully, I have it done by the middle or end of um, summer of 2024. And that is something I've taught in the Michigan area at different studios for $150 for a, um, um, a certain topic in Photoshop that was a hands-on class. I'm going to offer this in two parts, and the two parts will be 10 bucks each, and it'll be based on what you're interested in. But you'll get all the images and all the other assets that were included in that class, and I'm keeping it at a very reasonable price for you. So take a look at that uh, periodically. Uh, I'll have some promo videos that will talk about different stuff there. All right, so with that out of the way, uh, let's finish this really strong, and that is let's get the camera out practice, make mistakes. You know my attitude about mistakes, and that is we learn from making mistakes when we analyze our images after the fact. So literally think creatively out of the box. Until next time, see ya!